Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This afternoon we're going to install the Epson Workforce WF7520, WF standing for wide format. It can print up to 13 by 19 prints or scan originals as large as 11 by 17 or A A4. So as the uh, here's your installation utility. Now uh, you know you're definitely going to want to uh, do the Epson drivers and utility. It's required. This um, Epson user's guide link. We're we're going to want to have the user guide link available. Goes to an online help system. You probably want that too. Uh, the Abbey Fine Reader is the um, software that turns scan documents into edit editable text using OCR technology. We already have a version of Abbey Fine Reader on here, so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. And then finally, you have the special offers, news, and alerts. Um, and if you want something that's going to be running in the background, that's going to um, pop up and and uh, I'll make give you special offers, news, and alerts. That's fine with you. I mean, there's enough stuff, even on this clean computer, to uh, pop up and, and, and alert and nag us. Uh, Java, Acrobat Reader, updates, virus, virus definitions. So, no. I don't need something else popping up. You may want to, may want it, and I'm probably Epson doesn't want doesn't want to hear me say it, but um, you probably don't want it either. All right, so it's a 343 install. There's no custom installation. That was it. They usually give you a option to um, do a easy install or a custom install, and that was basically the whole thing there, and that was pretty easy. So accept. All right. Um, If you have a wireless connection, you can and you can set it up from the control panel. You could do, you could do wireless here. We uh, couldn't uh, enter the on a Windows a Cisco uh, Cisco wireless router. We, on, it, it, we don't have a uh, easy setup button on it, so you know it wouldn't let me enter the um, security code for my it let me look find the SSID but it wouldn't let me enter the security code there may have been a way to do it but um, it wasn't clear so um, you know we hooked it up wired um, and if you're going to do this direct USB connection um, I don't recommend that unless you absolutely don't have any kind of networking uh, you'll have to purchase your own USB cable so we got it hooked up this way wired and uh, let's see uh, this this is if you're setting up for the first time and this is if you uh, set it up previously and now you want to put it on the network so we're gonna be setting up the first time we're gonna set it up to our existing network uh, plug an Ethernet cable we did that Showing you to plug it into your router, or your switch, or your point access point, or your hub. It's already plugged in. Uh, do we want to check for updates? Absolutely. Let's see what happens. Hope it doesn't take too long. This can sometimes uh, drag on forever. It's checking for updated drivers. Now uh, the software that ships with your uh, machine may not be as current as the stuff that's on the internet, so it's doing you a favor and it's checking uh, on the internet for the latest drivers. And it's uh, it's gone right into the installation setup. I didn't see anything um, that said that uh, it had found newer drivers, but I don't really care. It's installing the scan setup. It's checking the currently installed printer drivers and it's asking us to please wait. Now it's preparing to install something. Now it's pr preparing an Epson Connect. That one just flashed by so fast.
and hopefully Epson can act as this user guide link. Well, it may or may not be, but um, the drive light is flashing. This balls are going back and forth. Which is probably something a little more complicated than just a simple link. Now it's doing the now it's doing the fax utility setup. Okay, it's it's still installing the fax utility and as long as it keeps going we'll keep recording okay now it's uh, click next to start network installation alright it's given us a firewall warning allow access checkbox that's nice searching for the printer It's on, it's, but it's sleeping. I just woke it up. Alright, it says printer not found. Click OK and follow the screen instructions to run the setup again. Now, it usually doesn't happen when we hook them up wire, wired. Oh. Checking the printer over here. There's no, there's no blinking light. It's definitely plugged in, and I'm going to turn Wi-Fi off. Disable it. Let's see if that helps. Try it again. Connect it with a cable. Did that. Okay, it found it. That's good. I turned off the wireless and it seemed to um, have made the the difference. Usually when you plug in a cable it automatically disables the wireless. Alright, well it wanted automatically acquire an IP address. File sharing setup. Allows right access to external storage devices such as memory cords from the computer oh okay okay this would be you, you can actually write to the memory cards over the Wi-Fi or the network and this allows you to Write. Okay, write to the USB only from the write to the memory cards of the USB flash memory from computer activated or connected via USB and computers connected via Wi-Fi can only be read. And then this one is just the opposite. Allows you to write to the memory cards of the USB flash memory from computers on the network and the computer connected via USB can only be read so we, we don't have we don't have it hooked up via USB so we're going to want to have that we want to be able to write from other computers since we're not connected versus USB. Okay. 
other computers be in this one right here since it's not connected to USB. Settings confirm, confirm connection. This may take up to five minutes. I hope not. jumped out of that uh, five minutes thing really quick, like ten seconds. I'm glad it warned me. Alright, um, network printing is now enabled. I can click a test page, um, see your documentation for details on loading paper. I'm not going to print a test page right now. I believe you. Got a little printer down here. Alright, would you like to set up your fax number and header now? Well, let's do it. Um, I don't have the fax wire plugged in, but well, I might as well do it. Click. Next. Make the basic settings to send receive faxes. A fax header. Worth consulting cannot type. Next. Oh, please. Next. I don't want it to auto answer. Set whether or not to start dialing after detecting a dial tone. I think that might be a good idea. All right, next, sending settings to the printer. I do have a little uh, network symbol on the um, control panel before. And before that, it had something that looked like an exclamation point. I guess that meant wireless. So you need to t turn off the wireless if you're going to do it Ethernet. Fax settings complete. Checking for updated firmware. That's a good idea. Now we're doing the Epson downloader. Still have the Abbey to go. It was 443. 17, oh boy, 17, 27 minutes so far. Uh, I don't know, you can probably yank five off of it because of uh, waiting and hoping that uh, the screen recording software wasn't interfering. But it's still taking a while. It's downloading uh, firmware. It's going to install it. And we have something down here. This is called the... This is the the monitor while well, we're downloading firmware. Monitoring preface, nozzle check, head cleaning, print head alignment, printer settings, buy ink, driver update, auto update settings. Well, that was a sloppy click. All right, this is your... Uh, monitoring preferences if you want uh, when you want to be get a screen notification an error communication error ink low maintenance call offline pause other warning it's downloading firmware simple status notification I'm not sure what that means you can choose your kind of icon you want here And it says double clicking the icon opens the. Okay, this is this one's got a transparent background. That one's got a little dialog box, and this one's solid. Allowed monitoring of shared printers. Low ink reminder alerts. Display Epson offers no. Share my in usage information with Epson no. And let's double click it. I'm 
Okay, you can it's double click it and it's the Epson status monitor. It's telling me the model. We can check the print queue. There's nothing in the print queue. Details all look nice. Showing us uh ink levels. You can go to online support here, you can buy ink here. Uh, it's telling us exactly what kind of ink it is. Oh, they shouldn't have done that because it downloaded successful. Click OK to continue. And I just did it. Okay. Here we're going to online support. And I just interrupted the installation, so let's go back to that. Turn printer on and off. Click start to begin updating. And turning off. It's a nice little, nice display saying turning off. You can hear it turning off. Turn it on. Turn, turning on and off. Looks starting up pretty quick. Okay. I click start to begin updating. Okay, it's updating. And on the screen over here, it's saying updating firmware, do not turn power off. It turns on and off automatically when complete. Now everything's just ground to a halt here, waiting for printer to restart. It's not asking me to reinstall the uh, Abbey software. It, uh, it saw that we had it. We already have it on here. Let's see right there. So we're just going to do. We just did repair, and that's nice. It uh, didn't install another copy. Um, so it's just fixing that, and and over here the. Um, online support drivers how-to videos frequently asked questions documentation contact support directly that looks pretty straightforward uh, it's still repairing um, Abby to work with not really repairing it it's making sure the settings work for for this for this new printer all right. Please close Microsoft Office before the installation. Uh, Microsoft Office. I'm going to close this and do install. All right.
right, so it's actually doing a pretty big deal here with Abby, although it was already installed, but at least I'm confident that, that it's not going to install a second version of it. And what we have so far in the program menu, we've got two Epson's here. Epson Connect, shared printers, monitoring, I'm not sure what that's, what that's all about. Epson Scan, This is update by ink software install. Epson scan, scan settings, scan. Epson software download navigator. Not sure what that is. And event manager, I kind of think I know what that is. Fax utility, I know what that is. We already went through that. So this. Abby is still going on here. I don't want to start anything up because it'll okay. It's validating the install. Go baby, go. Now we already looked at this, which is called. I don't know what it's called. The monitor utility. Got a lot of good stuff in here. A lot of stuff that you won't have to go over here for. Now this is gonna, if there's any problems, this thing's gonna let you know. It's a bit based on, based on what your monitoring preferences are. We looked at that before. Okay, uh... Let's get this installation out of the way so we can quickly look at what the software looks like. Oh, it's still got another hole. Okay, now that's finally finished. The bar moved about a, a tenth of the way before this flashed up. Uh, let's just hope that this um, comes to an end. And he started at 4.43, it's now 4.25. Like I said, maybe five minutes. Okay, five minutes messing up because of the slowdowns caused by the screen capture and my BS next all right now you're gonna want to register this I'm not because it's only gonna be on here for a couple days and I gotta pull everything off so take a look at what the registration looks like and right now it's looking like slow okay the benefits of registration don't worry that Epson's not going to sell your name or emails or email addresses or anything like that oh, they don't have time to fill it out right now it will not diminish your limited warranty and it's quick and easy next I should have done cancel. No, it's picking up some address stuff. And I really don't want to do this. So I'm going to cancel it. I don't want to be reminded. Okay. Epson Connect email print. All right. Now this is going to. This will let you print photos, emails, and attachments from any email device. It's like, it's very similar to HPE print. So we got to go through this. Now, it probably would have been helpful to fill out that 
registration information because I'm going to have to do something similar if and when it starts up. I'm going to have to create a username and a login. Okay, looking for the printer. It should be able to find it a little quicker this time. All right, email, print number, service, terms and conditions. We're not going to read through them. Yeah, it says here if you're under 18, you shouldn't be using this site. So I don't agree with that, but I have to agree to finish this. Next, register a printer to Epson Connect. Okay. Sending information, setting information to the printer. Please wait. Ah, it's printing something out. This will be the first print that I've seen come out of this machine. It's pretty quiet for a uh, inkjet machine. I don't kind of barely hear the ink print heads flying back and forth. So it just gave me a um, printer connection confirmed. Two more steps completed from your com from your computer and then it gives me an i an, an email address here and then um, you can manage your account at epsonconnect.com slash user all right welcome to the can I, I am a new user register username password English Greenwich Mean Time five and um, minutes uh, month day year hour minutes seconds good register now what your username oh this is supposed to be my e email address duh. This is um, really much easier than um, having to go to HPE Print Center. And um, not a bad idea. Here's the email address. It's pretty bizarre. So uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to hang on to this printer print that just came out. Now, the HP uh Email address is pretty bizarre too, but you can always go to the ePrint Center online, and you can do that with this as well. You can go to Epson Connect dot com slash user. Come on. Uh, you know, if I could if I could type Okay, so I need to log in. I'm 
All right, so print overview. Here's your here's your email address, so you, know, you don't if you lose this piece of paper. Um, paper sizes. You have photo paper, and you have selected the paper tray one. I don't see where I selected paper paper cassette one, but I'll put photo paper in there if I have to. Then you got to make sure that your um, everybody prints the tray two. Then so I'm not burning up your photo paper. Only image file. Only image files will be printed on photo paper until photo paper mode is deselected. No, oh, that's good. It's gonna <laughs> image files will be printed on on photo paper if you have this photo paper printing selected. Approved senders. Right now, anybody can. You can uh, you can do a list of senders, add an address. Right now we can just. My, I'm only I'm the only one allowed to send to it. You can add somebody. E email notification. When a job has been sent, when a job has expired, when it's successfully printed. Or when an error occurs, uh, you got printer description. You could put which WF seventy five twenty it is if you have more than one, or mom mom and dad's WF seventy five twenty. Change the printer email if you want to change it to something easier. Suspend or resume the service, and my printer email list, whatever that is. Okay, so if you have more than one Epson, it would be here. So this is pretty straightforward. It's kind of nice. Epson's did a nice job there. So let's quickly go over. This is, you know, taking forever. We know what th this is OCR software. Uh, this is a, Epson Connect is a website, shared printers, mo monitor shared printers. see anything happening there. Epson Connect printer setup. We did just did that. Epson scan settings. All right, select which which model it is. We only have the one. Uh you can add or subtract scans. You can test here. Really, not much you're ever going to use that scan settings for. This probably will. Epson scan. This is for pulling scans to your workstation. Oops, I see something lying down here. Okay, let's see. All right, there we go. All right. Color black and white, black and white. Image type, office mode, professional mode, home mode. So I assume that the higher up you go, the more features you're going to get. Yeah, sure enough. Document type. Well, look, you can do film or reflective. ADF, single or double-sided. Photo or document. Color, grayscale, black and white. Scan all up to 9600. Document size. 
all kinds of adjustments, unsharp mask, de-screening, backlight, dust removal, preview scan, and a look at all this stuff. And oh man. So, uh, sure gives you a lot of, a lot of high level scanning capabilities here. And under the configuration, you have a preview, win preview window size in inches or millimeters, sampling area, densitometer, eyedropper, sensor sampling area, color control, gamma, document feed or match front and back images during duplex scanning, correct skew, where to save your work, where your work area is your scan scan uh scan temp files where they're gonna go this is a um this is professional mode but it's sure sure got a lot of a lot of good stuff in it so i'm not, i'm not gonna get into this scan part of it um well maybe i should Everybody seems to have trouble scanning, but if you buy this thing, you should probably know about scanning already. Okay, scan. Uh, let's save it in um, my documents. Uh, I'll take a JPEG is fine. Multi-page TIFF. If you have, you know, if you're gonna do a bunch of scans through the document feeder, it'll make it'll make a separate file for each document. Options, compression quality, encoding. This is some heavy duty stuff. All right, let's quickly do scan. Scanner is warming up. In the meantime, let's look at this stuff here while it's warming up. See what else we got to look at. Download navigator event manager. I don't know what this is. I'm going to have to look at those things. We don't have to look at any of this stuff. Buy ink, driver update, online support. The user guide. There's two of them. I'm not sure what the difference is. Scanning time remaining four minutes. Nah, can't be. Alright, this one's an HTML user guide. And solving problems. It's pretty extensive. And then this one. I don't remember what the one I just looked at is, but um, then this one is the uninstaller. So, okay, we looked at the guide, and that's the uninstaller. So we, all of this stuff we looked at. The, the shared printer monitoring monitor settings window didn't show up. But I uh, assume that if you have other shared printers, um, you can also monitor them with this down here. And as far as this download navigate, th this scanning has taken way too long. Check for printer updates now. Okay, the Epson Download Navigator. No, I don't want to check for printer updates now. We just did that in the installation. Event Manager. Okay. Oh, okay. That has something to do with the scanner and the folder. <clears throat> we'll do that after the scanning is done.
And then there is fax utility. Oh, okay, this is for a PC fax. You can send a cover sheet. There's a phone book. Your, your transmission record, your settings for the printer. Add another printer. Another fax printer. Your phone book. I'm assuming this scan is taking so long because we have the recording software going and I'm messing around with all this stuff. So here's the phone book. So you would add a new person, fax number, title, nickname, company, division, and it would show up in the fax phone book and control panel of the device, I assume. Yeah, this keeps slowing down because I'm messing around, but it's taking an awful long time. So. Okay, the scanning Kazinta is gone, and my documents folder opened up. And here is the scanned image so that was pretty straightforward it's upside down I'll probably put it on a platen wrong hope not but if you go into this preview it'll let you crop and rotate and all of that stuff ahead of time so let's get out of this Epson scan And see what else we got here. I think we 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 looked at everything else. I hope so. This is really been a long time. Okay, the user guide. We looked at that. We looked at the, all of this stuff. Install online support. Bot. And we don't need to look at that. Scan settings. Epson scan. We looked at that. We don't need to set up the printer. Okay, that that's pretty much it. I don't see any quick way to do any scanning other than going to this going to the uh, scan software. I mean, usually over here you can activate scanning. I don't see any way to push scans to to with a desktop either. Uh, scan, scan to PC, okay. Only with USB connection from here. Okay, let's look at the print driver. Epson makes it easy for us to check the printer settings just like we would do if we did file print properties. And what we see here is right on the left we have something called printing presets. Uh, you can see on the right here, uh, paper source, document size, tray 1, 2, document sizes from 3 by 5 up to super B, 13 by 19. Paper types include uh, photo paper, different brands, uh, presentation paper. Um, you know, this is nice, you won't see uh, the ability with a color laser printer to print on uh, any types of photo paper. So, you know, you can be sure with a, uh, a inkjet that can print on photo paper, you're going to get um, photo quality that's better than almost any la color laser. Right, and as far as the quality, we have five different quality levels here. Um, Economy is probably perfectly readable, and uh, I could select that and uh, do um, add remove presets over here. You can see that it's got the uh, economy setting here, and I could name it eco quality and save it and assign a a um, icon for it. You can see there's a whole bunch of icons here. And if I saved it, it would show up over here. And I could just quickly click this for eco quality. I could also set 
grayscale. I could also set automatic two-sided two -sided copying. Uh, it just gave me a warning here when printing a document containing lots of photos and graphics. Click print density and select your, your uh, document type. Okay. And then print density. You have text, text graphics, text photo, user defined. We can do the density and the drying time uh, settings here. Lots of control on this uh, in this print this print driver. Um, it's got multi-page, up to four by four poster. Um, what else? As far as multi-page, let's do two up and then page order. You have uh, you can set your pages to print out in different one two two one one on top of two. You can print it with borders. Two-sided printing. You have the ability to do a binding edge, a binding margin, and booklet create folded booklets for either a center binding or a side binding. And this would be like a signature booklets and um, you know with this big paper you can make booklets fold them in half correct uh, pagination and in more options we have um, color correction it's automatic you set it to custom and then advanced uh, we have um, color controls I have it. Hold on, let me go back and take it out of grayscale, and I'll get more color controls. And as you can see, fix a photo, do uh, ICM color management, no color management. We have Epson, Vivid, and Adobe RGB color modes. Uh, you have your when you make changes, it shows you the original original and the preview so I guess if I drag this down here you should be able to see it getting bluer over there yellower greener right. and you can also uh, instead of look doing it uh, I mean you got you have brightness contrast saturation color saturation density Um, you can also do it with a slider instead of the circle. You can do a slider bar here, and you can see it's all out of whack minus 14, plus 25, etc. So I'll just do reset, and everything goes back to zero. So you got plenty of color stuff you can mess with here. And watermarks there's a bunch of um, bunch of uh, pre installed watermarks you can add your own name you can name it and and the text that it contains um, settings you can use when you put a watermark on uh, in the position on the page and all these different places look at that um, you can change the location X and Y you can do a, a layer front or back. You can change the size. You can have it print on the first page only. You can adjust the angle. You can do the color, the density. Um, you can do stamps, underline, bold. I mean, it's pretty, uh, pretty intense. Pretty intensive. Lots of lots of good stuff in this. Um, of course, you don't have to mess with any of it. Every, everything you can do, you need to do, really, is right on the front, the front page here. And these presets are probably just about all you need. I'd put a, a dot two-sided document, and the, when I hover over it, it tells me what the settings are. And if you click here, and it also tells you what the settings are. So if I do two-sided, you see it changes over here. I do two-sided with two up, it changes over here. All of your settings are shown up here and in a graphic rep rep representation down here. Um, back to more options. Uh, rotate high speed. What is high speed? Well, you, know, you look at the help and it says uh, for help, right click an item to get a detailed explanation. Cool. So if I just um, say what the heck is high speed? 
right click it, do help, and it tells you that it activates bi-directional printing so it prints left to right for the highest speed. If you want the best quality, you can turn this off. So you can you can really got a lot of ways that you can enhance the quality. And uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm positive of all the Epsons that we've tested that uh, over the years, it's, you know, it was, the, the quality is not going to be wanting in, in too many ways. And we'll find that out when we do the, um, we get into the image quality evaluation. So show settings, we saw what that is. We don't need to show the settings again. And then over here we have all of the utilities, nozzle check, head cleaning, print head alignment, uh, start up the Epson status monitor three, the changers, that's what's down here. Change your monitoring preference, extended settings, uh, all kinds of stuff, high speed copies, uh, status monitor, enable it, check page width before printing, all of these options here. Uh, and they're definitely advanced. You can check your print queue here. Um, you can go into the uh, and check the printer and option information. And um, we can do a setting sheet and um, it's going to print it and I'm going to cancel that. Don't need to waste any ink, never do. All right, you can change the language here. You can do driver updates, online order, online support. I mean, basically, right from the print driver, you can do everything but scan. And over, you know, you'd have to go over here to do your scanning. Um, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit um, behooved by the fact that we can't keep some kind of a scanner control live someplace. We looked at this yesterday, and we didn't really look at uh, the settings. It didn't really, okay, here we go. And it doesn't show anything about um, keeping a live control anywhere on the desktop. So let's go back to this. Now, this Job Arranger Lite. Um, I did a couple. What you do is you you check this in the down here in the quiet mode. What is quiet mode? It reduces noise and it doesn't change the quality, but the print space. So in other words, it's probably the paper feeding noises are. Um, and the, the velocity of the printhead um, and maybe may be changed to make it quieter to print, I and mean, that's pretty cool. We know <clears throat> we know what print preview means, but job arranger light. What is that? You check this box, and when you print your job, I did this ahead of time, and it sends it to this job arranger light, and what what you get is um, let's turn off two sided. Okay, every job you print, there's one from Adobe, here's one from Excel, this is Acrobat, I should say, Excel, Microsoft Word, a couple pages. All right, now you got them all in, in uh, Job Arranger Lite, and you can move the pages around. You can add blank pages, which I did here. You can, once you select Duplex, you can specify the front and rear of, so I'll, I've got a front page and then a blank, actually a blank, where is blank, back, front, blank page, front, let's say this is all out of whack, um, front, back, blank page, blank page needs to be moved here, so now i got a front, blank page in the back, Front, back, We've got a blank page should be up here. So yeah, you can see what I'm doing. I'm moving these things around. Oh, this Microsoft Word document needs to be with the down here. 
and this Excel document needs to be up here. Alright, so now I have Acrobat blank, Excel blank, and then three consecutive Microsoft Word pages. So what I can do now is is print them with the current settings. Uh, I can copy, paste, insert page, delete a page. I can move them using these controls instead of dragging them up and down. Uh, can rotate pages and the print settings are your normal print settings now i could i could uh, you know change this to black grayscale i could do all of the stuff in here and once i get it done i click this and it'll print this in one job so it lets you assemble um it lets you assemble prints from all different kinds of any any window any application you can print from and print them all in one job using one settings duplex watermarks, the whole nine yards. So it's pretty cool. Um, we've seen it before with uh, like Panasonic or something similar. Uh, Rico has something similar. Uh, Windows used to have something called Job Binder, which was sim similar. I'm not sure whether that still exists in Windows 7 anymore. Uh, but you get the, the gist of this whole thing. And it's built into the print driver, so it's nice. All right, so, uh, you know, Epson makes it really easy for you to get to all of the features of the device through the print driver. So nice job with the print driver, Epson. Um, the only thing left for us to do is find out if there's a way to get this Epson scan software to always be resident either down here or a floating toolbar some way that makes it a little easier to to get um, to this rather than clicking through out to here to get it to scan and actually not much is happening like this took a while to load yesterday so it's even more of a reason to uh, have it stay resident. See there's something floating down here. So maybe that's it. Once you start it, it hangs around down there. And um, then you and click on it to open it up. And configuration, let's see what configuration says. Preview of color. ADF. Oh, we already looked at this stuff yesterday, but no, there doesn't seem to be any way to keep this. You have to load it yourself or maybe put it in your startup in order to keep it down here, which is not a bad idea if you do a lot of scanning. So it stays down here. So anyway, that's it for now. And uh, nice job, Epson.